that's the biggest one. And I already know that I put that one on there. Oh, there it is. No need to retain earnings because it's a service company. Mature company. The idea that I had my timeline, and, I, and this is timeline and profit line, and I have some losses, then I go to profitability, and I'm growing really, really fast, and then it levels off, okay? And maybe this total thing is 15 years. This is two years, and, and uh, this is uh, 10, and the, the total is 15. Well, here, probably we want flow through taxation, and it's the evolution of the company. Maybe even an LLC tax proprietorship or partnership, so we can uh, more easily deduct the losses than an S corp. Here, well, and maybe we're at low levels of income right here, so it's still okay to be flow through taxation. But eventually, we can save a lot of dollars, as as these examples point out. And for that 10 years, let's say we have 20,000 a year. So at the end of 10 years, we have $200,000 more in net worth than we would have had if we used the S-Corp. Then here, we switched to S-Corp because we've leveled off. We're in a mature state. Here, we presumably keep putting more into fixed assets. We, our inventories are growing. Our accounts receivable are growing. Even when we get here, we may be paying off debt for a while and want to stay a C corporation, use lower rates, okay? But eventually, we get to the point where cash flow and taxable income are very close because we don't have all those dynamics going on. And you'd say, well, what about when you start going down? Well, typically, you don't go down. I mean, sometimes the business levels off and the, the owners become complacent and it goes down. But usually, it at least stays here. All right. So but mature companies, they may level off, and that's when we go back to flow through taxation. Then when we sell, there's a up to 10 year period that you have a double tax, bonus gains tax, but eventually you don't, okay? And even that bonus gains tax. The, the whole idea is um, if we have a company that some of the people are active and some of them aren't, how are we gonna get profits out to the inactive owners? We can't pay them a wage. Right? We can't give them fringe benefits. So we can't get anything out to them in a tax deductible way. So if we're going to distribute part of our profits, that's going to be part of the model because we have inactive business owners and they want to return on their money, then generally we're going to go flow through taxation. Last not year, maybe close. I would have said what I'm going to say today, but, but uh, uh, two years ago I probably wouldn't have. I would have said that super profitable companies generally should be uh, a flow through entity. Even if during the growth stage and all that, they, they aren't. At some point, if they're super profitable, even if they continue to grow, maybe they should switch over to uh, flow through taxation. Because you get to a point, even though you're growing and you have retained earnings, you haven't leveled off yet, you have such high profits that the double tax issues start to become a problem and things like estate planning become more important, and a sales more likely or something, or you want to shift income, and it works better in flow through taxation, okay? Now, going forward, 2009, 2010, that's still the rules, except things are changing, in that what we used to have, if we go back five years ago in Ohio, is we had a uh, top rate, individually 35 and say net Ohio of five and so 40, right? And, and then in the C corporation, we had a top rate of 34. There's a few that pay at 35, but you have to be pretty high, okay? 34 plus the franchise tax, most of it was 9%. You deduct that, it ends up about net six, okay? And it's equal to 40. So why would I, if I'm at Buku dollars, why would I use a C corporation? I'm paying no more tax. Even if there's a differential of, if this was a C, 38 and 41 or something, that's not enough to justify. On a million bucks, $30,000. 30,000 is a lot, but not as a percentage of a million dollars, okay? Going forward though, 
or, or actually not even going forward, today, we don't have this. So now, this is passed. Now we're at 40 and 34. Because there's no state income tax in Ohio. So is that enough? Is 6% enough? Is 60,000 on a million enough? There, oh, we'll get that way. Okay. Is that enough? I, I don't know. I don't know. So if we're super profitable now, may we stay as a C corporation, so we pay 6% lower, knowing that in that case, if we'd sell down the road and paid a double tax, even at present value, it's going to be more. Okay, that's not time value money. I mean, if it was bunches of years, it might make up um, for the fact that we paid double tax, 6% might be enough, but not in 10, 15 years, probably. Okay, so should we do it because we don't know if we're ever going to sell and we, we can reinvest more and hey, you know. Bird and hands were two in the bush. I don't know. Some places maybe, some places maybe not. It, it kind of depends on other factors. Are we likely to have inactive business owners, or do we have them? Uh, uh, do we want to do a state planning? If we're going to do a grat. You're going to want to have a, a flow through entity. Things like that. Okay. So maybe, maybe not. And that's a judgment call. I would not fault anybody, regardless of the facts, on us if they went one way or the other. It, it's hard. It would be hard to fault somebody. Okay, now going forward, future, well, we don't know, but there's a high likelihood it will be 35 and 34, or 45 and 34, okay? That, that's, if this will not go up, we won't, the state of Ohio won't tax it, they'll do something else to raise revenue, sales, cat tax, something like that, individual tax, but they won't come back to franchise tax or personal property. I mean, I don't know, but probably not. And that we'll go up to a top rate individually of 40 plus our net Ohio tax of five, okay? I mean, that, that's, so now we're at 11. Yeah. Or, or, well, zero to sometimes, you know, it was like zero to 3%, it wasn't enough. 6%, maybe, maybe not. 11%, I don't know, 110,000 now in the million. It doesn't take as long to make that up with time value of money, if there ever is a sale, all right? So it kind of, you know, it depends. There's a possibility with that surtax, it's 50 and 34. There's also talk of a 28 here. Now that, that I think will finally raise people's eyebrows that there'd be, there'd be, everybody needs to be a C corporation now, yeah. The, the people get to these extremes. They, Everybody's got to be whatever, because that's the newest thing. When it, 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 in the 86 Act, after the 1986 Act, everybody needed to be an S Corp. Well, we kept a few C Corps. We were able to save some money with C Corps. It was less common, but we kept a few. LLCs come out. I remember an attorney called me up. I want to change all my corporations to LLCs. And I'm like, well, hold on here. You know, you have a tax liquidation, okay? Maybe it would have been the best choice in the beginning, maybe not, but we don't want to make wholesale changes. So if this happens, I bet you there's people out there that everybody needs to be a C-Corp now. So, and I wouldn't agree with that. There would still be times when flow through taxation would be better, okay? Especially where you're going to turn around and sell inactive business owners, things like that. But now we're talking 22%. That's huge. Then, even if we would pay the second tax today, we're still 2% better. So, yeah, of course, this is assuming a lot of things, all right?